I have got a new bike and it's an interesting choice compared to what I would have previously chosen and it's got a lot to live up to because it's replacing a bike which I consider to be one of my favourite bikes to ride, my rim brake Pinarello Dogma F12. a bike which I've raced on, I've been on countless epic adventures on, and I've filmed numerous GCN videos with, and it was even the bike that I was riding last year when I had that major crash. So it's fair to say that bike has seen some action. The F12 model is almost four years old now, and the world is changing. We've got 12-speed gears, disc brakes are slowly conquering the world, and uh, it seems like every month we see the newest, lightest, fastest bike released. So I've replaced my F12 with this, the Pinarello F9. Whilst I've had this bike for a few weeks now, you won't have seen it before on any videos on our channel. And that is because the videos I have used this bike for simply haven't been out yet. But if you keep your eyes peeled and subscribe to GCN and GCN Tech, well, not only can you see this cool new bike, it really helps support what we're doing. So we'd really appreciate that. Anyway, to the bike. This is the one of the latest models from Pinarello in the F range lineup. This is an F9 and it sits one lower than the range topping Dogma F, which is what teams like Team Ineos are using. The colour is razor white, which I think looks absolutely beautiful, but is an unusual choice for me personally. And here in the UK, you are almost certainly never going to see another one in this colour. And that is because this bike is not going to be sold in the UK. Hi Alex, um, just wanted to show you my brand new bike. It is the Pinarello F9 in razor white. How cool. Now the reason I've typically avoided having a white bike in the past is because I believe bikes should be ridden in all weather conditions and gradually a white bike tends to get a little bit dirty and grubby and hard to keep clean. So to combat that, on my new bike, I've ceramic coated it and then on top of that, I've applied Silka's Graphene Wax. So hopefully it's going to keep this bike in tip-top condition for as long as possible. The frame size is a 57.5 centimeter, which is essentially a large in most other bike brands. And it's constructed from T900 carbon fiber, which is essentially one grade lower than what's used in the Dogma F. And this is one of the ways that Pinarello are trying to differentiate the F9 from the range topping Dogma. And I've got to say that for your everyday rider, I think you'd be hard pushed to feel the difference in the frame weight and the frame stiffness. But what you will notice is the bit of extra cash that's left in your wallet. This thing is built up with the latest Shimano Dura Ace 9200 semi wireless group set. And when I got the bike, it came with some 40 millimeter deep Pinarello most carbon fiber wheels, which I've actually switched out for at the moment these, which are the Shimano Dura Ace C50s. And from the few weeks I've been riding this bike, I'm currently switching between these wheels and a set of Zip 454 NSWs because I can't really quite decide which to leave in the bike yet. But let me know in the comments section down below and then um, we can decide which ones to leave in. The tyres which are fitted onto the C50 wheels are the Pirelli P0 Race TLR SLs in a 26mm wide. Now even though they're a 26, fitted to these C50s which have got a 21mm internal rim width, they actually measure up slightly wider, so they're more like a 28. And the reason I've got those fitted at the moment is because here in the UK, gradually it's kind of getting to summertime, so the roads are clearing up a little bit. Whereas over here on the 454 NSW wheel, I've got the Pirelli P0 Race TLRs, but these are the new version with that crazy speed core technology. And according to Pirelli, even in a 28 millimeter wide, these should technically be a little bit faster. Now the rotors fitted to the wheels are 140 millimeter on the front and the rear for both these 
and the 454 NSWs. Now, I think that 140 rotors offer more than enough stopping power and heat dissipation for almost all conditions, unless you're riding down some big, epic mountain descents. But I actually had to really convince the mechanic at GCN Megabase to order me the 140 rotors to go on the front. But, um, well, here we are, got my rotors. I mean, if they're good enough for Matthew Van Der Poel, they're good enough for me. In terms of the rest of the group set, well, the cranks are 170 millimeters long, which is a preference of mine from my days of racing. The chain rings are a 3450, which is, which is okay, but I would prefer to have a 3652 if I could. I just prefer having that extra bit of gearing. Now we move to the back. The cassette is an 11 to 30. A balance which I think is really good between the range of gears that you have and also the jumps between the different gears themselves. And we've got no oversized pulley wheels on this bike, but for maximal level nerd gains, I have cleaned out the greasers inside the bearings in the pulley wheels and replaced that with oil. And then for even more gains, well, I've got wax on the chain, which is not only helping improve the efficiency of it, it's also gonna help prolong the life of it. Oh, one more thing. This bike has also got a left-hand single-sided power meter. This one, I actually stole from Ollie's Canyon Speedmax. Cheers, mate. Up top, we have my saddle of choice, which is the Novus Boost Evo in 145 millimeter width. Now, typically, I tend to switch between this saddle and the SLR Boost, although I've got to say, I do ever so slightly much prefer the short nose saddles. And rumor has it, the Novus Boost Evo is due out soon with a 3D printed top cover. So if it is out, Hopefully I can get my hands on that. I most certainly will get it onto this bike. Now talking of 3D printing, the saddle clamp assembly is also 3D printed from titanium. And this is a carryover from the range top in Dogma because it uses the same clamp and the same seat post. Now we move down onto the seat post area. There are a few subtle differences from the Dogma and to what we have on the F9 here. One of those being the hidden internal seat post clamp, which I think looks really neat and tidy. And then another one of the differences is just down here at the front. And that's this little port here, which is allowing you to run this bike with a mechanical group set. However, I've got to say, I feel like anyone who's likely to be able to buy this bike, chances are you're going to have it running with an electronic group set. But nonetheless, somebody is probably going to do it, and I think it is good to be able to have that option. Up at the front of this bike, it's still a bit of a work in progress for me. You see, at the moment, fitted is 120 millimeter long and 46 centimeter wide bar stem combo. This is the Talon Ultralight from Pinarello. And well, it's a bit of a big boy. You see, Pinarello measure their bars outer to outer. So a 46 still equates to a 44, which in my opinion is too wide for what I prefer to ride. Hence why I've got the levers angled in, sort of looking a bit funky like this. But I have got a 130 millimeter stem and a 42 centimeter wide bar on order. So when that arrives, I'm gonna get that fitted ASAP and then head over and see my old mate Jake at Precise Performance to get a bike fit and get my position absolutely dialed in on this bike. Because I have a feeling it's gonna be a long way off because my last bike fit was about four years ago or so. So I'm actually pretty tempted to make a video about that, which would be interesting. And at the moment, we've got the most out front mount, which has also got a little GoPro mount underneath but I'm thinking in the coming weeks, I'm gonna switch that out for the 3D printed titanium one that um, Tom Sturdy made me for that video a while ago. Yeah, I'll fit nice on this bike. Hmm. Last couple of details for the bike now. So pedals, we've got Wahoo Zeros. These are the versions that are using stainless steel axles. A bit of a Marmite pedal system, really. However, I have been using this system since way back, since maybe around 2007, long before Wahoo bought out Speedplay. And I'm a really big fan of them. Although it has to be said, setting up the cleats is a little bit of a pain, but hey, 
can't always have it easy. Um, bottle cages, these are exactly the same as what I have fitted to all of my different bikes. These are the Two Peaks Shuttle X Carbon. 100% not the lightest bottle cage which Two Peak or anybody makes out of carbon fiber, but these ones are really good at making sure your bottles stay firmly in place, which is kind of like the most important thing. Now, onto the weight of this bike. And I've got to just confess here, I left my scales at home. So what I'm gonna do is weigh the bike when I get home and then we'll put the weight up on the screen now. So hopefully, just there. <laughs> right, free up sound check this thing. Get this on speed. Nice. So that's pretty much the main run through of the bike and I am really enjoying having it so far and really grateful for the support of Pinarello here at GCN. But why is it that the F9 is not available in the UK, I hear you ask? Well, I don't know the official answer to that, but I have a very loose theory on this. You see, the F9 has a retail price of around nine and a half thousand to 10,000 pounds. And then when you consider if you are maybe lucky enough to be thinking of buying a bike like this, well, for an extra thousand pounds or so, you could pretty much afford to get the range topping Dogma, which means I've got the very best bike that Pinarello make and exactly the same as what the pros are using with the same spec level of build. But who am I to know? I don't know. Anyway, all I know is I'm really enjoying using this bike and I'm buzzing to get out riding it all the way through this summer. There you go, hope you've enjoyed this video, taking a closer look at the setup of my bike. And I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on it actually, so let me know in the comment section down below, not only what you think of the bike, but also if you would change any of the setups, how I've got it. Right, I'm out of here to go and get some lunch. I'm absolutely starving. See you later.